Welcome again, Maxim here, and in this video you will find out what you need to start and complete a hunt on the local boss on the Orb Valleys, Profit Taker. And in the next material we will take a closer look at the Exploiter Orb fight. Just like the previous video, this material is not intended to describe the necessary mechanics which, when used, will reduce the combat time to a total minimum. Instead, you will learn the basics. I will present you a set of necessary and useful information and what you will gain from hunting. At the moment, the Profit Taker is one of the two local bosses on the Orb Valleys. However, there's a long way to be able to face it. First, you need to get to the Fortuna on Venus, where the Vox Solari story quest awaits you. After completing it, you will be able to increase your reputation in the Solaris United Syndicate. Depending on your commitment and your mastery rank, it may take a while for you to get to the maximum level. No matter how long it takes, you must reach the maximum rank, Old Mate. At this level, you will gain the trust of the local people. They will trust you enough to show you their plan of taking down the Profit Taker. Before that, however, you need to know where to start the preparations. Go to the back room to the left of the elevator. There you will find Yudiko, Business and Little Duck. Come to the table and start the dialogue. Here you can choose which orb you want to hunt. To kill the Profit Taker, you need to learn about it first, as it is equipped with sentience adaptive systems, so not much can be done in its current state. The first and second missions are not too demanding, just a bit of point to point running, looking for objects, a bit of shooting and defending. The markers will guide you. The third mission is the moment of your first encounter with the boss. Then you will be asked by the business to shoot the Profit Taker, so he can gather data on how adaptive shields work. First you damage shields with any weapon, then according to the susceptibility of the Profit Taker. This boss is always vulnerable to one specific damage type. It is displayed above its head. This is the only type of damage that can reduce shields at a time. Each vulnerability lasts for a while and then changes. However, if you deal enough damage, a vulnerability will change quicker. You can also force that change yourself. When shields are damaged with an operator or an app, the susceptibility changes immediately. This is very important part of the fight. Remember it. After collecting enough data, you will be able to return to Fortuna. The last stage is hunting. Let's start with how the fight goes. Orb will be in one of several places. It will be moving around. Go to the marked place and start by breaking the shields. Without them, you will be able to use your arc gun to damage the limbs and then the central part of the orb. Arc gun can be used on regular missions if you put a gravimac in it. You get the first one after completing the third mission related to the profit taker hunt. Put it in the last tab of the arsenal, heavy weapon slot. You have to insert Gravimac and Oracing Catalyst in it, in order to use it on foot missions. Also, you need to insert Arc Gun Deployer to your gear wheel. More Gravimac blueprints can be found in the 10 lab in Dojo. After dealing damage to the orb for the first time, it will fire special pylons to protect it. You have to get close to the pylons to destroy them. Close range is almost always required because the pylon is in protective bubble. You can walk through it, but not shoot through it. Unless you have Zenith, one of the weapons available from the daily tribute. The first chance to get it is on day 100, then every 200 days. It has a unique property on the alternative shot, infinite punch through, so you can shoot pylons with it from anywhere. But without it, you can just go through the bubble and destroy them from the inside. All destroyed pylons will allow you to damage the limbs and the body. After this stage, the shields come back. Again, you destroy them by adjusting the damage to the current vulnerability or you change unwanted ones with your operator. After breaking them, you damage the limbs and body. Then the pylons will come again, but this time there will be more of them. After the destruction, there will be a time stage. You will have 5 minutes for shields, limbs and the final destruction of the orb. It will drop rewards after a short animation. After picking them up, I recommend running or flying away, because the orb will explode and this can wipe out all players in a large area. This is how the fight looks like. Now let's move on on the tips on what and how to use. Let's start with Warframes. Generally, there are two approaches, 
Either you take something you don't get killed in easily, or something that generates a lot of damage. The second option is harder to survive, yet it is possible, and the mission will end much faster. When playing solo, I recommend second approach. While playing in a team, it is good to separate tasks. A common and convenient choice among players is Inaros or Rhino, as the ones who die less often and keep an eye on the rest of the team. The Rolling Guard mod can be useful here, as it gives you temporary immortality and removes all statuses. It is available through arbitration. This mode is unlocked after completing all locations in the navigation. You will get Vitus Essence there and you can buy this mod for 20 of them from shop in the Hexis headquarters on the relay. However, for players who have this mode, it is relatively easy to obtain, so you can also trade it with someone. Another useful mod for Warframe is Surefooted or its Prime version. The regular one gives you 60% chance to resist knockdown, primed one guarantees it. Ok, let's go back to the Warframes. What else can be useful? A DPS, any Warframe that can generate a lot of damage. Personally, I like Chroma, but Volt or Mirage will also do the job. Wisp can be useful as a support and buffer, Mesa for killing mobs. Ember can do that too, and also provide a large amount of energy orbs, with an argument on her fourth skill. Other characters can be used here too. These were just a few examples. Choose the one you are effective with. And don't die too often. What weapons you should choose? I already mentioned Zenith, but it is not necessary. Weapons able to deal a lot of damage in short time are definitely useful like sniper rifles, or something with high fire rate. Melee weapons may also be good here. Zaw with Exodia Infection Arcane is a popular choice. Using this melee in the air creates a projectile that deals great damage. But how to distribute damage types on them? As a full team, it is not a problem to share the elements on different weapons. The bigger the team, the easier it gets. It is best to cover all types, or almost all of them reduce the operator usage to the minimum. But going solo, it is not that simple anymore. In fact, it is possible to make one person carry weapons with all possible damage types, but it requires a lot of knowledge. There is primary weapon, secondary, melee, arc gun, operator's weapon and the necromech that owns its own arc gun and exalted weapon. So there is still a lot of possibilities. However, for those who prefer simpler solutions, a way to go is to make a few good builds on weapons and change the unwanted susceptibility with the operator. And what about the time per run? At first, it may all seem very complicated to you. There's a lot going on on the battlefield and you have to remember what to do and when. Don't worry if the first attempts take more than 10 minutes. After a few tries, you will reduce mission duration. 5 to 6 minutes are pretty good. The best players are able to kill Profit Taker under a minute, but such attempts are near the perfection and require a lot of knowledge about the aspects related to this boss. So, what do you get from killing the Profit Taker orb? The guaranteed rewards are Debt Bounds, worth 2200 after exchanging them at Tickers for Solaris United Sending Points. Except that 125,000 credits, which can be multiplied with a credit booster, or with Smita's Charm, or 4th Chroma skill. You have to use it under the orb's back when you see the reward for completing the mission. On top of that, you also get Chrismatoroid, which gives you points at Vox Solaris. I will discuss farming the Syndicate in the next video. Among the rewards, dependent on the RNG, are mods and Bloodshed Sigil, 3% chance. And that's all in this video. Next one will cover the Exploiter Orb topic. If you have any questions, please type them in the comment section or visit one of my streams, link in the description. See you next time, bye.